Okay, it's time for our last review for the Unit 1 lecture exam, and we want to talk about telescopes. So here's your lesson objectives for this particular exam, and then you should be continuing to read out of your textbook Chapter 5. So first, what is the purpose of a telescope? It is not to magnify. So on the telescopes that we use here on Earth, like if you're looking for birds or if you're looking for mountains and you want to look at it up close, yeah, magnification is a very important thing. But for astronomers, it's not. So for an astronomer, if, you're, if the star normally looks like that, then when you look at it through your telescope, if it was a magnifying telescope, it's going to look like that. It doesn't really tell you anything about the star. So instead, the purpose of a astronomical telescope is to gather as much light as possible. So we need to gather as many photons of light and then somehow use some kind of bending apparatus to bring the light to a focus where you're going to put some kind of a detector that's going to tell us something about the star. So uh, in a few moments, we'll talk about what kind of detectors that you put on a astronomical telescope. So how can we bend light? So there is two kinds of telescopes, reflecting telescopes and refracting telescopes. The oldest kinds of telescopes were refracting telescopes. So that was what Galileo used, for example. They use lenses, pieces of glass. On the other hand, a reflecting telescope uses mirrors in order to operate. So modern astronomical telescopes are reflecting telescopes. So let's look at the two different mechanisms. So you're going to have refraction. Uh, and so what this shows is that light that is uh, coming in like this, when it hits some other kind of substance, so let's say this is more dense substance like glass, then if this wasn't there, the light would just continue to go in a straight line. Okay, but because of the bending of the light, when it goes into this, it's going to be bent in this direction. Okay, and so that uh, is going to be called the process of refraction. There's mathematics behind it. We're not going to talk about the mathematics of how it does it or how to compute the angle that it, it makes. It can be done, but I just want you to see what refraction is. Now, on the other hand, reflection is over here and so here you've got light that's coming in it's bouncing off of this mirror and it's going in that direction so this is reflection this one here is refraction there are two kinds of lenses and there are two kinds of mirrors you got to know the names you got to know what they do so let's first talk about for refraction you have two kinds of lenses, one's shaped this way, one's shaped this way. You got to know the shape, you got to know the name. So this one is a converging lens, this one's a diverging lens. Why do they call them that? Okay, if light's coming in like this, then the converging lens converges it. So it will make the light bend like this and like this. And then right there, that's your focal point. Now this one, light comes in, but instead of converging, it diverges. So this one is a diverging lens. Now you might be saying, well, what's the point? If it doesn't make a focus, well, this, is, this can be used to control where the light ends up inside the telescope. So it's really important these two different kinds of lenses. Now over here, let's talk about different kinds of mirrors. 
So this one is concave, and this one over here is convex. And notice they do the same thing. So light comes in like this. It bent, it's going to be bent, it's going to be reflected, but notice that it goes this way, and this one goes this way, and so here's your focus. This one, the light comes in, the light comes in, but it ricochets off like that and like that, so it diverges the light. So you could call this one a diverging lens, and then this one's a diverging mirror. This one's a converging lens, this one's a converging mirror. But I would prefer if you use the words concave and convex on that. So know it for the exam. Okay, now let's uh, look at the different uh, focusing uh, mechanisms and what they do. So you definitely need to know the refracting telescope and the reflecting telescope. And you need to know that this is the older method. So the older telescopes utilize this. Modern telescopes utilize this. You can calculate how far away to put your lenses to make a good refracting telescope. And that's given by that formula. But don't worry about it not going to be on the exam. You can also figure out uh, how much light a telescope can gather by knowing the size of the opening to the telescope. So that's the light gathering power and all I want you to see is it's proportional to the diameter. Bigger is better. So the bigger the opening to your telescope the more light it can gather. So don't worry about the formula. Um, now if you're concerned with magnification, so again let's say that you're talking about looking at birds or something, you want to know the magnification of your telescope, then there's a formula for how to calculate it. But you're not going to do it, so don't worry about that. So here's a sample question, if you were worrying about that, which you're not, so don't look at this. Now there is a third way of changing the direction of light. So we said here refraction, this one's reflection, so the third method is called diffraction, and diffraction is bad. You do not want to have diffraction in your telescope because it's going to alter the direction that the light is traveling, which means that it won't come to a focus like it's supposed to, which means that your star is going to look blurry, and you don't want that to happen. So diffraction depends on two things, the wavelength of the light that you're using and the size of the opening of your telescope. You want the diffraction to be as small as possible. So let's look at the formula. So the diffraction, the, the amount that the light is bending, is given by theta. So it's the resolution of the telescope. And you can see that it is proportional to the wavelength of light you're using divided by the diameter of the telescope that you're using. So let's look at these individually. So the diameter is in the bottom part of the formula. So that bigger telescope means the diameter is bigger, which means the angle is smaller. That's good. That means the light is not going to be diffracted as much, so it arrives at the focus like it's supposed to. Let's look at the wavelength. So the wavelength's on the top. So if you want this to be small, you want this to be small. So you want to use small wavelengths of light. So what would be a small wavelength of light? Gamma rays, x-rays. So a gamma ray or an x-ray telescope would have the least amount of diffraction problems. 
Uh, but radio waves have the worst diffraction problems because radio waves have the largest wavelengths. So how do we compensate? Have a large telescope. Bigger is better. So the bigger the telescope, it can overwhelm the fact that you're using a large wavelength and it can make the diffraction effects small. So this is what it does. And so let's say that you're looking at two stars and the diffraction effects are making each star get more and more blurry. Well, it can get so blurry that the two stars blurry together. Is that blurry together? I don't know. The two stars get so blurry that their blurriness makes it look like there's only one thing there instead of two things. So this is why diffraction is uh, a bad thing. Okay, so here is the kind of question that might be on the exam. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the devices that you put on your telescope.